Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. In today's video, this is uh, something that we're starting to move along uh, and try to help out all the non-Turbo 301 owners out there. Um, we're starting to branch out and hopefully get you guys going with a little more performance. And that's what this video and all this testing is going to be about in the upcoming videos. So uh, previous video, if you haven't seen it, go back, check it out. Um, we installed a camshaft, a, a cheap flat tappet camshaft from Summit Racing uh, into our uh, test engine, which is an 81 uh, non-turbo 301. So what's the difference between non-turbo and turbo when it comes to the 80 and 81 model year? Um, basically, it's flat top pistons. Uh, we got a little more compression on the non-turbo version. They didn't dish the piston like they did for the turbo car, which... Uh, allowed the compression to be around eight to one with the flat top piston. Um, so that's mainly the only difference. Uh, camshafts, I think, are pretty much the same. Uh, I don't think that, that, like I'd mentioned before, there was no difference in factory camshaft for a turbo model. Uh, they basically use the, the NA or regular 301 camshaft. It did not use the W72 camshaft. Yes, there was a W72 option. Uh, I believe it was in 1980 that was kind of a high output 301 that was a little hotter cam from the factory. Um, this engine is not that. This engine was a 81 computer controlled four barrel flat top piston. It's a low mileage motor that I had picked up. Um, and like I said, it's described in the other video. Uh, I'll put the cam card up again. It's a Summit Racing 2800 cam. 204, 214 duration at 50,000 lift. I believe it's uh, 421, 444 uh, lift with a 1.5 rocker arm. Um, that is basically the only change that. And we managed to modify and bolt on some long tube headers from a 64 to 72 GTO, I believe they're for. I bought them used, uh, got them to fit. And that's what's going to be on this dyno. So uh, we'll get right into it right away. This is all. Uh, naturally aspirated testing that we were doing and we're just trying to see how much power we can make with it we later on in the video i'll get back and kind of describe the next steps that we're uh testing in there but uh basically we end up changing uh to some modified cylinder heads and a different intake manifold so let's start it off for now uh here we go right into the dyno all right what are we looking at here all right so what we have pulled up is the load cell calibration screen. So we have an arm on the dyno uh, that is 66 and a half inches long from the load cell. What we do is we hang a 20 pound weight. So we can see that in the screen here, we got 66.5 inches, 20 pounds. Uh, right now we have it zeroed for just the calibration bar. So I'll go hang the weight on. Okay. So since we've told it how far the weight is hanging out and how much the weight is, it is now calculating for that. So before calibration, it's saying it's 19 and a half pounds. So we hit load calibrate and it adjusts so that it's actually 20 pounds. And then our actual torque that far out is 110 foot pounds. So we save calibration and we're all done. Cool, all right.
So as you can see, the Holly carburetor looks to have made a couple more horsepower, but it's really not the carburetor that made the power. We think it's the carburetor spacer that was used. Uh, we had a two inch spacer on top of a square bore to spread bore adapter. Um, so <clears throat> that's probably where the couple extra horsepower came from. As you can see also, uh, both, both runs were done with 40 degrees of timing. Uh, we made multiple pulls with the Quadrajet at first, just adjusting timing, adjusting the uh, fuel mixture, basically using the secondary metering rods and hangers as the adjustment. But um, I think if you put the spacer underneath the Quadrajet, it would probably match the Holly or pretty close. I mean, you're, it's only a couple, couple horsepower. All right, for the next mod, uh, we're going to be putting on a set of cylinder heads that are modified with larger valves and some other porting and reshaping of like combustion chamber and so on. So this is the head that just came off of the engine. It is stone stock 81 uh, non-turbo 172 intake valve 15 exhaust valve 100% stock nothing nothing done to it. Um, this one here we have a 1.84 inch intake valve. We unshrouded the valve at the combustion chamber here. This is a 1.55 exhaust valve. There is a uh, there is a multi-angle uh, valve job done, uh, basically to try to get a better radius into the throat. There's throat work done. There's some porting done. Basically a lot of blending and everything uh, going into the intake port. Um, the intake port, and it might be kind of hard to see down in there. Not much of a change, but there's a lot of blending going on and so on. We did make the small uh, port larger um, as you can see here this is the stock stock port this is the new one we're trying to match basically the pinch point between the push rod uh, holes we're trying to match that same uh, width in here um, other than that stock valve springs we did cut for positive lock seals but again we're just running a flat tappet cam so it's not a big deal and we uh, gave it a nice coat of gold paint, <laughs> so you'll know that these uh, heads uh, are on the engine and that they are different and modified. Um, so on the engine itself, we have the heads off here. You can see that it is just a standard bore uh, 81 301 four barrel because of the flat top piston. There's no dish or anything in there. There's no valve reliefs. Um, this is this is how they came from the factory. We do we are running the Flat tappet cam, the 2800 Summit Racing flat tappet cam so far, looking really good, no problems there. Um, intake manifold, let's uh, talk about that real quick. Every, all the testing that we were doing with the stock heads and everything was done with this stock four barrel uh, 301 intake manifold. Now it kind of deviates from stock in the fact that we put an adapter on here and internally it has been opened up and modified accordingly. It also still works for the EGR adapter uh, that is standard with 301 four barrels. It's a really tall uh, EGR adapter. That's also a pretty big spacer. So what are we going to put on these custom large valve heads? Because our airflow testing showed that this stock intake manifold or even a stock turbo intake manifold kills flow kills flow on a stock head. So what's the point of putting a large valve in the cylinder head if this is just gonna restrict it anyway? So we came up with this. This is a Torker 2 that has been narrowed to fit the short deck height 301. And we have uh, welded new flanges onto it that we had laser cut. And I know what you're asking, but wait a minute, Torker 2's they have conventional intake ports. They have 400 style intake ports. Those don't match up to 301 heads. Well, yeah, you're right, they don't. Let me show you something though. If you take a 400 intake gasket, like this, and you put it onto, and we'll go this way. And if you put it onto a 301 intake, or sorry, cylinder head, 
it will seal. It will seal around the port. Does it make more flow? Well, according to the airflow bench, bolting that awesome torquer two <clears throat> onto the flow bench, got rid of the restriction. And after some other modifications to the head, we got an increase in flow. So what we're gonna do is modify the 400 head gasket and cut the divider out of it. And when we cut the divider out of it, lo and behold, the whole thing seals. Now I know a lot of people are probably like, you can't do that, that's not gonna work. Well, if you don't try it at all, I guess you could say it doesn't work, but what's the harm in trying? And I kinda did some research, not on this specifically, but if you look back at Big Block Chevy, that back in the 60s, there was a round port head and there was a rectangle port head. And the rectangle port head was the one that flowed the best. But not everybody could afford rectangle port heads or they had round port heads and they didn't want to get rid of them just yet or upgrade. So there was no round port performance intake manifold at the time. So people were putting rectangle port intake manifolds onto round port heads of their big block Chevys. And of course, the ports didn't line up or match up. I shouldn't say they didn't line up. They lined up, but they didn't match. And, but people still saw a horsepower gain. Another example, Joe Mondello, the Oldsmobile guy. A lot of 455 Oldsmobiles were in jet boats, but there was also 460 Fords that were in jet boats. And they asked Joe Mondello, hey, can you get more performance out of the 460 for the jet boats? Well, he noticed that the intake manifold was a restriction. It had small port heads. He put a Cobra Jet intake manifold on it. Again, didn't match up, but there was a gain in horsepower. He also tried radiusing the entryway to match, which made things worse. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna put this Torker 2 intake manifold onto 301 heads after we modify those intake gaskets. Let's just see what happens. Here we have the heads already on, intakes on. Uh, decided just to make runs with the Holly Carb and the two inch spacer since that gave us the best results and the most horsepower on the stock setup. And we just wanted to see how much power we can make with it. So as you can see, this little 301 didn't do too bad. Uh, 271 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated stone stock bottom end 301. Pretty decent, um, especially for not having a very large camshaft. You know, this, this cam is, you know, pretty mild, honestly. And according to calculations, we're not using the full potential of the cylinder head yet uh, for how much CFM that head can flow. We're, we're not even uh, using it all up yet. Um, a larger camshaft would probably help with that. We did try a 165 roller rocker arm trying to get more lift out of the cam, but it didn't seem to care. <laughs> it didn't, uh, it, the lift was not the problem. Um, we believe the duration is the problem or maybe what's kind of holding it back. We, we make good, you know, power and torque and everything, but, uh, probably a, a larger camshaft and more RPM, uh, would, would, maybe even get us into the 300 horsepower uh, crankshaft uh, power mark. And that would be pretty impressive to have one horsepower per cubic inch without boost. Um, that is definitely something I want to try in the future. Um, but right now, uh, this little motor's got a different, uh, <laughs> a different assignment, different mission coming up. We're gonna, the next video is gonna be showing it with boost and it's not gonna be a turbo. We're actually going to supercharge this engine next and see what it does. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time.